हेलो हेलो ओके सो इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए सीक्वेंस डिटेक्टर व्हिच विल डिटेक्ट 1001 यूजिंग मोर नॉन ओवरलैपिंग मेथड नाउ इन केस ऑफ ए सीक्वेंस डिटेक्टर यूजिंग मोर नॉन ओवरलैपिंग मेथड what are the steps you need to follow that i will discuss and if you understand the process or procedure whatever i shall follow to implement this detector you can easily implement the other detector using the same steps okay now the first of all the most important thing is how to make the state diagram okay that is the most difficult thing what uh, student finds so uh, we need to understand how to make the state diagram okay now step number 1 is we have to make the state diagram okay so how to make the state diagram now first of all you need to understand as we are using more technique in case of more technique the number of states you need to consider in the state diagram that is given as number of states in the state diagram is given as n plus 1 what is n n is the number of digits given in the sequence detector okay so in this sequence detector how many digits or how many uh, bits are there 1 2 3 4 okay so here n value is nothing but 4 so how many states will be there 4 plus 1 5 states you need to consider in case of more technique okay so whether it is overlapping or non overlapping in both the cases you need to use uh number of states equal to 5 okay now if you have gone through my previous lecture which was about more overlapping technique then you can easily understand this method also more non overlapping technique also okay now the thing is in case of more overlapping technique what are the steps we have followed to make the state diagram it is almost same only the change will come in the last node or last state of the state diagram you need to follow some different rule in case of non overlapping technique okay so other than that for the remaining nodes or for the remaining states the rule is exactly same whatever you have followed for more overlapping okay now you can come to the state diagram so we have calculated five states are there we can write it down a b there are the five states a b c d and e these are the five states okay now after that what do you need to do you need to make some direction and you need to write these values here 1 then 0 then 0 then 1 because we need to detect 1 0 0 1 so blindly you can write 1 0 0 1 here okay now a is known as research state so in this state not only in this state actually for each of the state you need to consider two input possibility one can be one the second one can be zero so in each of the state you may have input of one or input of zero so both the inputs you need to consider okay so if you see for state number a we have already considered the input of one what we didn't consider we didn't consider the input of zero so if you consider the input of zero where you, you need to go you need to again come back to the uh, or uh, research state a so this rule you need to remember okay so for research state what input you still didn't consider you have to consider that remaining input and if you consider the remaining input of zero you have to come back to its original state or a state again and this rule you need to remember okay 
So for A, we have considered both the input. Zero we have considered, one also we have considered. Okay. Now we need to find out for B uh, using two different input combinations. Okay. So for B, what we have already checked, we have already found out zero. Okay. So means in B state, if you apply zero input, you are going to state C. Now, what we didn't consider, we didn't consider the input of one. Because what I already told for each of the state, you need to consider two input, one as well as zero. Okay. Now, the question is zero, you have already checked. Now, what about one? If you apply one, then from B, where you need to go? That is the thing you need to find out. Okay. Now, how to find out? Now, in order to find out that thing, you first have to do this operation. What it is? You need to identify what actually B is detecting. B is detecting the value of 1. Okay. So similar procedure you follow for C. C what it is detecting? It is detecting 1, 0. So whatever it is detecting in each of the state, you can write in square box. Though it is not the main part of state diagram, but still we have to draw this thing in order to draw this state diagram properly. Okay. So for your understanding purpose, I'm making this uh, square box. Now what D is detecting? D is detecting 1, 0, 0. You need to start from here. You have to come to the left of D. So this is 1, 0, 0. So D is detecting 1, 0, 0. Now follow the same principle for E. What E is detecting? 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay. 1, 0, 0, 1 is detected by E. Okay. And remove this. This I used for your understanding purpose. Now come to this state diagram again. So what we are finding out actually for B, we are finding out the remaining input. Okay, the remaining input one. If the remaining input is one, where you need to go that you need to determine. Okay. So first of all, in order to determine that thing, what you need to do, whatever you have written in the square box that you copy here. And in the right side of this value, you have to write whatever the input still now you didn't consider. What input you still now didn't consider? That is one. So you write one here. Okay. Now make a comparison between these two. Are they matching? Yes. If they matches, then you need to make a cell. This is the rule you need to remember. If they matches, you need to use self to. If they doesn't match, you need to go to research state. Okay, same principle you need to follow for state C also. So for C, what you already considered, you have already considered input of zero. So in C, if you give the input of zero, you are going to state number D. Now what you didn't consider for C, which input you didn't consider for C, you didn't consider the input of one for C. Okay, now if you consider one input for C, where you need to go, now that will determine. Okay, how to do that? Same procedure you follow, whatever you have followed for B. So first of all, in the square box, whatever it is written, you copied this thing, one zero year copy. Now for C, what value we didn't consider that you need to write in the right side. So for C, what you didn't consider, didn't consider one. So write in the right side. Okay. So as C is detecting this one zero, two bit, uh, it is detecting. So you need to consider first two bit from this combination. Which two bit? Right side two bit first you need to consider. Okay. So compare this two bit with the square box two bit. Are they matching? No. If they doesn't match, what do you need to do? Now you take one bit less. One bit less means which bit you need to take? The extreme right side bit. Okay. Initially it was two bit. Now we are considering one bit state. Why? Because this two bit doesn't match with this two bit. Now we need to consider one bit. And which one bit you need to consider? The extreme right side bit. What it is? One. So as we are considering a single bit, it has to be matched with the single bit state and that is one. So compare these two one. Are they matching? Yes, the values are same only. So what do you need to do? You need to go to that one bit state that is nothing but B. Okay, when you have considered the input of one. Now, if that doesn't match, what do you need to do? If this one doesn't match with one bit state, what do you need to do? You need to go to reset state. Okay, now for example, somehow we had 
got this value of 1 0 for this problem we didn't get but suppose somehow for other problem we got the value of 1 0 so what we had to do in that case as this 1 0 matches with this 1 0 we had to make the self loop for c if it match you make the self loop it doesn't match then go to the uh, and uh, means uh, one bit less that is one and you compare with the one bit state okay and check whether it matches or not if it match you go you uh, go to one bit state if it doesn't match you go to reset state so this principle you need to follow for each of the state now do the same thing sorry do the same thing for the state d now for d what you have already considered one you already considered what you didn't consider zero you didn't consider okay now if you consider zero where you need to move that will determine now okay how to determine first what you have written in the square box for d that you copy here one zero zero now for d what you didn't consider zero you didn't consider now if you see d is a three bit detecting state so you need to take three bit combination this three bit combination fine now compare this three with this three are they matching no then what you need to do take one bit less so if you take one bit less it is becoming zero zero okay then you need to take in the right direction means right two bits you need to take one bit less means you have to uh, 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 means eliminate the left side bit and the remaining right side two bit you need to consider so what it becomes zero zero so now as it is having two bit you need to consider with the two bit state and two bit state is one zero it means one zero doesn't match with zero zero so in that case what do you need to do as it doesn't match so what do you need to do you need to take the last bit that is zero so zero is a single bit what do you need to do you need to compare with the single bit state that is one are they matching no if they doesn't match what do you need to do you have to go to the reset state that is when you have considered the value of zero. Okay. Now, as we have covered up to n minus one number of node or n minus one number of state, how many actually states are there? Five states. So till now, up to four state, we uh, found out the one and zero combination of input. Okay. Now for the last state means for the state number of for the state number e what do you need to do you need to follow a different rule as i already told if you uh, use uh, more overlapping or more non overlapping in both the case up to n number one number n minus one number of state okay up to n minus one number of state you need to follow the same rule but when you are coming to the nth state or the last uh, this node you have to follow different rule so that is the difference between uh, more overlapping and more non overlapping uh, based sequence detector okay now you can remove this thing because this is not important for us we want actually the state diagram now come to the last node what we know what rule you need to follow for the last node you need to consider one as well as zero so write it down one as well as zero these two things you need to consider now for the last note one you need to uh, do you need to compare each of the input to the one bit state if you can remember one bit state was b and that was detecting one so compare this one with one are they matching this one matches with this one yes so what do you need to do from e to b you need to move okay when your input was one Okay, now take the other input that is zero. Compare this zero with one. Are they matching? No. So if they doesn't match, what do you need to do? You need to come to reset state. If it doesn't match, you need to come to reset state. So that I can erase this one. So other input zero doesn't match with the one bit state. So you need to come to reset state and this input of zero. Okay, so you have covered all the nodes or all the states, means our job is done one uh, thing is still left we have to declare the output also so you know a is detecting zero so the output is zero because we want this sequence one zero zero one 
If this sequence is detected, the ion only will write output equal to one. Other than that, you have to write output equal to zero. So B, what it is detecting, if you can remember, B was detecting one, so output is zero. C was detecting one, zero, so the output is zero. D was detecting one, zero, one, so the output is zero. However, E is detecting one, zero, zero, one. And this is the sequence we want, one, zero, zero, one. So that's why output will be one in case of node E or state E, because E is detecting one, zero, zero, one. Okay, that's why the output is one in case of E. So this is all about the explanation of state diagram. Now, after that, what do we need to do? We need to make the state table. How to make the state table? Based on the state diagram. So now you make the state table. So this is very important and this is step number two. Step two, you need to make the state table. Okay. So in state table, what do you need to do? You need to consider each of the state. So in the presence, so what are the things will be there in the state table? Present state will be there. Input will be there. Next state will be there. Output will be there. So for the time being, these things we will consider. And few other things also we need to consider that will draw in the uh, next case. Okay. Now, present state. What are the states are there in case of this? Uh, State diagram, five states. These are A, B, C, D, E. And each of the state we have considered two input combination. It can be zero, it can be one, it can be zero, it can be one, it can be zero, it can be one. So the same thing you need to follow for each of the state. So what do you need to do? So this thing you need to write. A we have considered two times. One of the time we need to consider input of zero, input of one. So for B also same thing. Input of zero, input of one. Same thing you need to follow for C. 0, 1, and for D also, 0, 1, and after that, E. Here also you need to consider 0, 1, okay? Now C, if your present state is A, if the input is 0, then in which state you are moving? If your present state is, okay, let me use different color. If your present state is A, if you have the input of, this zero, where you are moving, you are having this self loop, means next state, again it will be A only. Now, if you have the uh, state of A, if your input is one, where you are moving? If you have A, if the input is one, then where you are moving? You are moving to B. Now, if your present state is B, if you have the input of zero, if you have the input of zero, where you are moving, you are moving to C. So right here, C. If you have the input of one in case of B, where you are moving, you are having the self loop. Means if you are starting from B, you need to again come back to B. Okay. So follow the same thing for C also. In C also, if you have the input of zero, you are going to B. If you have the input of one, you are going to B. Okay. Now for D, if you have the input of one, you are going to E. If you have the input of uh, zero, you are going to A. You are going to A. Okay. Now for E, if you have the input of one, you are going to B. If you have the input of one, you are going to B. And if you are having the input of zero from E, you are going to A. Fine. Okay, now what we need to do? We need to write the output. So here output 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And in the last case, if you can remember, in E only, from E only, we have gone to B and A, and in that time, output was 1. So you need to remember one thing in case of more model. In case of more overlapping or non-overlapping, in both the case, you need to remember when you need to write this output 1. from what state you are moving. Suppose from E you are moving and below E you can see one is written. So it means that in that case only you need to write output of one. Okay. If you are coming to E, then output will not be one. For example, from D to E we are moving and at that time input was one. If you can remember, from D to E we are moving at that time input was one. What output we have written? We have written the output of zero. 
Why? Because we are coming to E. So if you are coming to E, then your output will not be 1. If you are moving from E, if you are moving from E to other state, then only you need to write output of 1. So that you need to remember in case of Moore model. Okay, now after that, what do we need to do? We need to replace each of the state, means this variable A, B, C, D, E, by some binary digits. Okay, now you need to remember, uh, you need to understand one thing. How many bits or digits you need to use for each of the state representation? You need to use three bits actually. Why three bits? Because you have five different states. And you know, if you have five different combinations, how many bits are required to represent each of the combination? You need to use at least three bits. Because three bits combination will make five different combination. Okay. So you need to use at least three bits. If we use two, then what will happen? Two bit can generate four different combination. So using two bit, four different states are possible. But in this problem, five different states are there. That's why you need to use at least three bits. So A will be represented by 0, 0, 0 using 3 bit. Then B we can use 0, 0, 1, for C 0, 1, 0, for D 0, 1, 1, for E 0, uh, 1, 0, 0. So these five different combinations we can make. Now replace all these A and Bs in this table by these values. Okay, so do this operation. So I'm replacing. So suppose present state. Then you have input, then you have next state, then you have output. So as we have to use three bits, and write Q2, Q1, Q0, then input we can denote it by, we can denote it by X. So next state, we can write Q2 plus, Q1 plus, Q0 plus, and output we can use Z to denote that one. Okay. So other than that, some other things also we need to find out that I will write later on. First, I will complete this part. Okay. So, so if you can remember, first we had A, then B, then C, then D. We can replace each of the variable values by this 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 1 and other combination. So we have 0, 0, 0 for A. Then for B, we had 0, 0, 1. Then you need to write two times. Then 0, 1, 0, that is also two times. Then we have to write. Then A, B, C, then D was 0, 1, 1. Then we had E, 1, 0, 0. And each of the case input 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. Now replace this next state values also. This A, B, C, D also you have to replace by this uh, binary values, binary combinations, 0, 0, 0. Uh, 0, 0, 1, 4, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, then it will be 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and output you know 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and this 1, 1. We have already found out all these things. Okay. Now, other than that, what do you need to do? Suppose we are implementing this 1001 sequence detector by using JK flip flop. So, how many JK flip flop you need to use? You need to use three JK flip flop. Why? Because three bits are there in this problem. Three bits are there. So, three bit means each of the flip flop will store one bit. So, as you have three bit, three flip flops are required. So, this these flip flops are J2, K2. J1, K1, and J0, K0. So this flip flop number two, JK flip flop number two, this JK flip flop number one, and this JK flip flop number zero. So three flip flops here is. Now after that, what do we need to do? We need to find out the values of J and K for each of the flip flop using uh, 
excitation table. You know what is the excitation table of JK flip flop? If your present state is U1, next state is UN plus one. Okay, then the value of J and K you need to determine. So you know using two variables, four combinations are possible 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. And the excitation table is 0, 0, 0, x, uh, 0, 1, 1x, uh, 1, 0, x1, 1, 1, x0. This is the excitation table of JK people. Okay. Now use this thing to find out the value of JK. So this is 0, 0, this Q2 and Q2 plus. So this is present state and this is next step. So if you have 0, 0, according to excitation table of JK, this is 0x. Then the 0, 0 again, 0 x. Then you have again 0, 0, that is 0 x. Then you have again 0, 0, then 0 x. So all of this process, 0 x, 0 x. Then you have 0 x. Then you have this 0, and this is 1, 0, 1 means 1 x. Then you have 1, 0. 1, 0 means x1. Then you have one zero means x one. Okay, so same procedure we need to follow for J one K one also. So follow for J one K one. These two we do compare this one with this one and find out here. So zero zero means zero x. Then zero zero means again zero x. So complete this process and we do one x zero uh, x x zero x one x one x1 0x 0x now do the same process for the flip flop number 0 now in this case you need to compare q0 and q0 plus with 0 0 that is 0x then you have 0 1 1x and accordingly you complete this step it's x1 x0 then 1x 1x x1 x1 0x 1x okay now after that what do we need to do we need to find out the values of z j2 k2 j1 k1 j0 k0 how using kmf okay in this kmf whatever the input variables you need to consider for this kmf these are nothing but q2 q1 q0 and x these are the four input variables for KMF. So I'll uh, show the procedure for one KMF and remaining thing you can also do. I'll directly write down the expression for the remaining cases. So here you have the input of Q2, Q1, U0 and X. And what is we are trying to find out? Suppose I am doing for J2. So same procedure you can follow for the other variables. Also. So I am doing for J2. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay. Now you put the values of J2. You have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So six consecutive zeros are there. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6. We have put here. Then you have 0, 1. Don't care, don't care. 0, 1. Don't care, don't care. So remaining places, values you don't have. So what do you need to write? By default, it will be done. So if you do this, do this process, this pair you can make. So ultimately, J2 will become Q1, uh, Q0, X, according to KMM. Okay. okay. So same procedure if you follow. Same procedure if you follow for K2 also, you can find it out for this column. For J1 also, find you can find it out for K1 also, J0, K0 also. And as well as for Z also, you can find it out. So I'm directly writing the expression. You can find it out using the KMF procedure. Uh, so the expressions will be. Uh, so this one was for J2, no? Okay. So we can uh, do this thing for uh, K2. So K2 expression will become 1. Then J1 will come as uh, Q0 X bar. Then K1 will be X plus U. You can verify these results also. Q0. Uh, J0 is Q1 plus X. And K0 is Q1 plus X bar. 
and z value will come as q2. OK, now we got all the expression. Now what do we need to do? We need to make the circuit. So what do we need to do as we have three flip flops? This is j to k2, q to q2 bar. Then we have flip flop number two. That gives j1, k1, q1, q1. Or I can tell us this flip flop number one. Then we have flip flop number zero. Zero flip flop that is j0, k0, and q0, q0. But now what was the value of j2 we got? The value of J2 you got Q1, Q0, X. So J2 we can write uh, this AND gate you need to use Q1, Q0. Actually, ideally, what you had to do, you had to take one line from Q0, then you had to take one line from Q1, and you had to take from one line from input X. But if you take so many connections, then the uh, finally, whatever the circuit will implement that will look uh, complicated so that's why here itself i'm uh, considering this is as input uh, and k2 value was one then j1 is q0 x per so we can do we can use one and gate one is q0 other input is x bar okay and what about k1 q1 is what we got X uh, this plus relation. A one we got plus relation. Plus relation means we have to use or gate, not and gate. One of the input is X, other input is Q zero. Likewise for J zero, what we got Q one plus X. So we need to use or gate. One of the input is Q one. Other input is X, so output of our target will be given to the input of J0. As yes, we got the J0 function as X plus Q1. So same procedure you follow for K0 also. Target, one of the input is X bar, the input is Q1, and Z value was Q2. So this is the Z output, you can take the line from Q2. Okay. So our circuit is almost done. Only the clock has to be given. To complete. So this is the common clock. OK, so these steps you need to follow. In order to make a sequence detector of 1001 using uh, Morph non overlapping method. Okay. So whether this sequence is given or other sequence is given, it doesn't matter. If you follow these steps, definitely you can make the uh, more uh, or more non overlapping method. Okay. Thank you.